Hey folks, this is Tim Staley, your favorite poet teacher on YouTube, giving it all away for free. Those of you that have watched some of this series before, my How to Teach Literature series, you understand that I am not teaching literature like an English teacher, that I am teaching literature like a creative writer. Creative writers, those are the people that make literature. So instead of creative writer, literature, English teacher, it's creative writer, literature, creative writing lens. I came up with a great idea, but let me back up a hair. You know, last week I taught the romantic poets. Oh, y'all, did I have a great week last week? I loved it. Talking about John Keats and his daddy falling off that horse and his mama dying a TB and his brother dying a TB and him finally falling in love and writing Ode to the Nightingale and then him dying a TB. Y'all, I was, I was up there flapping my English wings all day long. You would have been so proud of me, man. I was trying to talk about it like a poet, but here's what happened last week. Not one kid smiled. Not one kid laughed. Not one student felt community. Not one student felt alive inside out. I felt alive because I'm a poet. I spent over 10,000 hours uh, in my life reading poetry. I spent over 10,000 hours in my life writing poetry. Uh, you know, this is just my jam. Of course, I liked it. But you know what I'm here to do is to try to get my students to like it. What I'm here to do is to try to get my students after they graduate to still want to read poetry, to buy poetry, to support the arts, to go to poetry readings, to maybe even read their own poetry at a poetry reading. That's my goal. Hey, guess what? I don't care about the grades. <laughs> kind of like that old boy in Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. Yeah, I stopped giving grades. That's not entirely true. All right, y'all, but here's what I'm up to today. What, what, is, uh, what am I talking about today? I got an amazing activity. Y'all can steal this from me. Y'all can steal this from me. You know what exquisite corpse is. This is not Exquisite Corpse, by the way, but just to give you, this is where the idea came from. Exquisite Corpse, one kid writes a sentence on the paper, hands it to the next student. The next kid writes his sentence and folds over the first sentence so that every time this paper goes around and students are adding to it, I didn't make this up, it's called Exquisite Corpse. Every time somebody's adding, uh, you're only seeing the one line before. And then at the end, you unfold it and you read it and it's ha ha crazy. What I did today is a little variation on that, several variations. So I cut paper into small strips. Here's an important step. On the back of my paper is poetry. I happen to have a Tony Hoagland poem called The Hero's Journey. Good poem. Uh, I had The Hero's Journey here on this. This will make sense in a minute. So um, I've got a row of five students. So let's say I have all five student rows, okay? So I handed it to one kid at the end of the row and I say, you can write one word, one word only, no punctuation, one word. And if you don't have a word, you can't think of a word, then you do have my permission to flip the paper and steal a word from the back. Okay, so maybe you see where this is going. The one kid writes one word, no folding. They pass it over. The other kid writes the second word. If I've got five students in a row, by the end, I'm gonna have a five word poem. This poem is going to be 100% collaborative. Here are some examples that came from my class today. I'm so excited about what happened today in my class. I'm so fired up because of my students' laughter, smiles, sense of community, and just straight up palpable joy. When was the last time there was palpable joy in your classroom? Y'all, here's, here's some of the shorter poems I got. Five, five words or, or more, maybe I had some longer rows. From time to time, life is pretty stinky. Now notice this, these students, or the starter student happened to do landscape mode. This starter student happened to do portrait mode. I let the starter kid decide if he wanted to go this way or that way. Here's one, butterfly flew away across the water. Hey man, that's a, that's a poet, poetry image, isn't it? And that's a complete poem. Now, maybe you got some kids that you just know can't be trusted with us. Here's one, some boy who started this, started with racism. Look at the way in which the class corrected this. Not that the word racism always has to mean that you're a racist, but just look what happened here. Racism is the worst choice. So, I mean, this kid thought he was like giggling, giggling, and he was being like uh, subversive somehow, but it kind of like self-corrected, self which I liked. All right, so those were some, oh, here's another, here's another uh, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Six students wrote this. Every word you're hearing is from another student. Spider, legs, crawled, up, him, gracefully. Pretty cool. And then I changed the rules. Changed the rules. All right, so now that for the next round, I'm now doing two rows. I'm now saying that you can have up to two words. I'm now also saying that you may include punctuation. However, your punctuation doesn't count as your word. Here's some of the uh, longer ones that came up. I am insane for pizza and soda. I love someone else. Not my proudest moment for sure. For sure. For sure. Make sure? Not sure. Too sure. Really sure, but maybe nothing. You sure? For sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Repetition. One of your friends when it comes to poetry writing. One of your friends. Uh, here we go. Orange hills in the dark. Never even heard the cries of getting Baja blasted at 3.20 a.m. in need of munchies. It be hitting hard, really hard in the clouds. Now, maybe you're like, oh, we got, we got a drug reference in here. <clears throat> Y'all, I work with teenagers. I work with seniors. Of course, we're going to have some drug references. Of course, we might have some, 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 some jokey uh, toilet language in some of this. We might have a poop. In here, and it might, we might even have an F-bomb that comes up here. And y'all, I guess you just have to decide, like I've said in these video series before, you got to decide what you're comfortable with. You got to build a relationship with your students. You got to figure out what you, what you allow. But I can promise you, when, when I'm reading these poems out loud and I say getting Baja blasted, or I even mention the munchies, uh, it, the, the class is erupting in laughter. People are smiling. And we're having a really, really good time today. Here's one. Again, every word or a couple words is by a different student here in Las Cruces, New Mexico at a public school and, and majority non-white. High school makes me want to throw up. Ooh, it is shattered soup with long days that never end. Ugh, feeling as though sad and bored. Did you hear that? Shattered soup? I read poetry every single day, modern poetry. Oh, that's just as good as anything I've ever seen in any modern poetry book. Shattered Soup? That's sick. That's just sick. I mean, I could keep on reading these all day long. I got a couple more points to show you. Um, just how, how creative some of these students got. You know, I just want to show you the shape of this one. So as this one is going around the room, some students are like spiraling it up. Um, here's an example of students kind of going all over the page doing that kind of spatial line break, almost like a concrete poem style. Um, and it was really neat to see, oh, here's one other one I wanna show you. These people, you know, everybody else all day long starting up here on the top left and going to the right. These people start in the bottom left and go up this way. Cool, so, so, so original, so unique. Students really flexed their creativity there. It wasn't hard and it wasn't, hey, I have students write poems all the time in here. Write a poem, blah, blah. This was way funner than that. This was way more collaborative than that. Everybody was smiling, everybody was laughing. People are saying, can we, can we do this again, mister? And of course, we, we're not gonna do it tomorrow because the first time is always the best time. And to do it tomorrow, would, um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be as fun as it was today. Y'all know how it is, returning to the scene of the pleasure. It's never the best the second time. Um, I think that's mainly what I got to share with y'all today. You know, I wasn't even sure I was gonna do another one of these videos, but I just had so much fun today. I just wanted to share it for you. Uh, if you. If you appreciate this, hit that subscribe button. Tell your English teacher friends. Go out and buy my poetry books. Go out and buy my poetry books on Amazon. My name is Tim Staley. Folks, we got a lot of stuff. As a public school teacher in America, you got a lot of forces trying to manipulate you, whether that be parents, your principals, the admin above the principals. And then sometimes, though, you can just have pleasure engaging directly with teenager joy, pleasure, humor, laughter, community. That's what I'm after. That's what I'm after. And I wish you luck getting to your students' joy. Sweet chillins, sweet chillins, and sweet adults who are teaching those chillins. Goodbye.